Is your engine running hot? And maybe you're just trying to make it cool. Well today that's what we're going to be working on. We're trying to get our engine temperatures down for those track days. My name's Kane, Bernie's not here, but welcome to Bernie Rubber's Garage. Let's get started modifying our C506. on today is replacing my engine oil cooler. Now from factory the car does not come with an engine oil cooler however I added one about a year ago and it's done okay. Now, the new unit is from Citrav, it's a 925. It has a higher capacity, it's higher quality overall so I'm hoping to get the temperatures down about maybe 10 to 20 degrees over what I previously have. Now, if you watched last week's video, our oil temperatures were getting right up around the 270, maybe even 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And personally, that's too hot. Now, I know online, some guys have seen LS engines run at 300 degrees. Uh, however, for me, my personal comfort level, anything uh, around that 270 number is just too hot to be comfortable. Now, aside from changing the engine oil cooler, we're also gonna be changing the airflow. The C5 Corvette is a bottom feeder and that means that the air comes from the bottom and it goes through the engine uh, radiator, the air conditioning condenser and our oil cooler. So we're going to try and improve the amount of air that gets to the engine oil cooler. And how we're going to do that is by cutting out a hole in our license plate filler and then we'll also have to cut the bumper which would allow that cold air to get straight to the engine oil cooler. The other thing we have to do is another track day inspection and today I know I need to replace my front brake pads. So since you're here, we might as well bring you along and we'll show you how to change out the front brake pads on this car. First up, step one. And if you've been uh, watching this channel long enough, you already know what step one is. Dodo. Step two, jack up your car. Get the bumper off the C5 Corvette. We need to go around and remove all these small bolts. There's gonna be some on either side of the fender well, all on the underside. A quick wiring harness disconnect on the right hand side of the car and then we've gotta take off the 10 millimeter nuts on each side. And then we've just got a bunch of clips at the top and then we'll be able to remove the bumper cover. So next up we need to remove this air deflector which means removing the uh, intake tube and loosening up the radiator support shroud. Sorry about the rain noise but it's raining. Anyway, here's the plan. So the license plate filler fills in this area here. We're gonna be cutting that area out of the bumper so the airflow goes straight into the oil cooler. Now this is the oil cooler we're gonna be removing and replacing with a new unit. The old and new oil cooler. New one on the left, old one on the right. You can see the size difference, so I'm thinking we're going to get a good increase in oil cooling capacity. Now not every project goes smoothly. I thought that I could use these adapters and just switch them over, however that wasn't the case. So I had to go run on down to Summit Racing and buy some adapters. These are M22 uh, by 1.5 to a Dash 10 AN fitting. I want the oil cooler to sit lower, to sit in this position roughly about here. And so how we're doing that is we're just going to be chopping off some of the, uh, the legs here. And then what I'm going to have to do is weld on one of these nuts. A quick bit of paint and now that nut is all welded in, the bracket is done. So the good news is everything looks like it's going to fit. It's a little tight and remember we're going to be cutting out a section in here to let the air come in from the, uh, the front. 
But now that we've got it all back together, it's a good time to check to see if there's any leaks. So I'm going to start the car and let's see if everything's nice and tight. So the oil temperature got to about 190, 200 and there are no leaks, so mission accomplished. Next up, time to improve the airflow. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is make the cut in the bumper. And I know a lot of people are probably cringing right now because these bumpers are hard to come by. So what I'm going to do in order to kind of be able to reverse this is these four uh, areas here. That's where a normal license plate would go. So I'm going to maintain those. That way the next person after me, if they have to run a front plate, then at least the mounting points are going to be there. So I'm going to just mark up and, and cut that center section out. So with everything cut and back together, this is what we have. You can see the engine oil cooler just through there. So I will need to make some ducting just to go between this piece here and the bumper and that will help direct air in. Now I am still keeping this as a bottom feeder so we'll get all the ducting back in and the air is still going to come up through the bottom but this should help just give it a little more airflow. So a quick note about the aerodynamics. Now air tends to flow from an area of high pressure to low pressure. Potentially we're creating an area that is going to be too high here and potentially go to a low pressure area somewhere down below. So potentially this air may just duct out underneath the car. Uh, so only time will tell whether this is going to be effective or not. Ducting on the sides is going to make it more direct. And uh, I'm hoping that the air that does come from this bottom feeder system come up. I'm hoping this air is going to be high pressure as well. And help go through the condenser, through the engine oil cooler and out the top. So just remember that air is going to flow from high pressure to a low pressure area. High being the front, low pressure hopefully is going to be all the way back here. I have two license plate fillers here. The OEM one is a nice one and this one is just a cheap generic one. I painted it a while ago. The paint looks decent but we did get some reaction. And you can see, you can tell that by that crinkling. However, that's not going to matter. This is just for track day. So the plan is to cut a square out of here and then try to match the OEM grill. What do I mean by that? Well, we have a beading around the hole and then the wire mesh. This we can order online. I'll leave a description uh, down below. For this, uh, what I would call a bead, uh, I'm just going to use some washer hose. We'll epoxy it in and hopefully it looks good enough. The border or the bead, uh, I've got this 2.8 millimeter windshield washer hose that I'm going to use. I'm going to have to split this in half and then we'll epoxy it in. Well, this didn't turn out too bad. Eh, just kidding. Ended up being a mess. Heads up, go ahead and just buy some clear epoxy. Uh, I obviously didn't read the label when uh, I had tan. So you could see just a little bit of tan colors right along the beading there. Uh, so I sanded this back, painted it, and it came out looking decent. I'm happy with it. Next up, we're going to cut out the mesh and then just epoxy it on. When it takes too long, just get a bigger tool. So that's how it looks after everything's said and done. Now the back side is a little ugly. Just with all that epoxy on there, but that's how it turned out. And that's going to do the job just fine. Now, the only thing left to do is to put the bumper back on. And then that whole cooling mod is complete. 
Last up, I just need to replace my front brake pads and do a track day inspection. Now, if you would like to know more about track preparation, then be sure to check out the video. I'll put a link up now. So let's install the front brake pads. Take your 15 millimeter and we're gonna undo these nuts. Now the caliper should just slide off easily. If it doesn't slide, then there's a potential that the brake pad could be uh, rusted on or seized on. Well, this didn't go according to plan. Not sure if you can see this, I'll bring it in close, but our brake caliper piston boots are cracked and that's just from excessive heat so it is a common issue to happen especially if you're going to track your car i don't have a rebuild kit on me today but i do have an entirely new caliper and i rebuilt this set oh you know maybe about six months ago so instead of just changing the brake pads out i'm going to go ahead and change the entire caliper now what that does mean is i'm going to be opening up the brake system so we're going to need to flush our brake fluid as well so the job just got a lot longer, but that's, uh, that's what happens. So first up, let's just change out this caliper and then we'll install the new brake pads. So the banjo bolt goes to 33 foot pounds. Okay, now that that's changed, we can get back to our brake pads. These shims can be replaced at this time, but it's not necessarily required. So here's the old brake pads. You can see some glazing starting to happen, and that's when the, uh, the pads heat up so much that the material and the glue start to come apart. Uh, so that's just a sign of uh, high temperatures. You can see how fast these track pads wear down. Now this set has about five track days on them. The front tends to wear faster than the rear. When installing your new pads, use a little bit of high temperature brake grease just on the end. And this is uh, applicable to any sliding uh, pad setup. So when you have pistons only on one side. Put the clips in place. Just want to install the pad. Okay, so the pads are on place now. If you think these pads are gonna be there for a long time, it's not a bad idea to put some anti-seize on our brake pistons, and that way the pads are not gonna to fuse to it. In this case, I've never had that problem, so I'm just gonna skip that step. And in most cases, you're gonna be using the same caliper. But in order to make the caliper fit over the pad, you need to compress these pistons. And that's why we open up that brake uh, fluid reservoir is so we push fluid back through the system and there's somewhere for that fluid to expand to. In order to do that, I normally just grab an old brake pad, install it, use a C-clamp, position your C-clamp and then, <laughs> and then you just compress it and that's gonna make that fluid go down and these pistons go down. I'm gonna to have to rebuild this set so there's no point in me pushing these pistons in since I'm gonna to need to pull them out. So with the caliper off, it's also not a bad idea to make sure that your sliding pins, in this case, move freely. And if they don't, maybe clean them out, add some grease. Twenty-three foot-pounds and we need to use a wrench on the slider pin so we can get the torque. And that's it. Now remember, when you go to press that brake pedal for the first time, it is gonna compress a little while the pistons and pads contact the rotor. So press the pedal once or twice, make sure you've got good pressure, and then you're good to go. Track pads normally need to be bed in, and what happens during that process is that the material gets transferred onto our brake rotor. Because we're using the same pad material as previously, uh, then the rotor already has that that brake pad material on it so we don't need to bed in the brakes. So essentially we're good to go. Now I'm going to have to bleed the brakes. I've got a little uh, motive power bleeder so it's going to make things a, a little easier. 
Well, that's all we've got uh, time for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I'll let you know how the engine oil cooler and the airflow mod goes. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and we're also on Facebook. Once again, we really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.